How many people have MacBooks? You have all touched FreeBSD. Um, so the, the core for Mac OS X Darwin, a lot of that comes from the FreeBSD code base. And also your user world, your commands also come largely from, from the FreeBSD code base. Uh, this is why they're not GNU. This is why you have these nice Linux commands that you cannot necessarily cut and paste into your Darwin shell. So you are, in fact, touching FreeBSD. So history of FreeBSD. FreeBSD, uh, I'm not, not going to give a deep history, but uh, basically someone at, at Berkeley 30 plus years ago uh, had an AT&T license for Unix. And this was uh, when it was still licensed, and it's still licensed somehow. But he had a license for the source code, and he started making changes to it. And But AT&T was like, you can't release this. So they rewrote, people at Berkeley rewrote the code base. Um, and that became BSD 4.4 Lite. And so FreeBSD is a fork of that. And uh, so is NetBSD. And then OpenBSD is a fork of NetBSD. And then Dragonfly BSD is a fork of FreeBSD. <laughs> but anyways, so uh, that was, I think the, the name FreeBSD was first applied in 1993. So it's, uh, it's a just a hair younger than the Linux kernel, I think. Um, FreeBSD is, why would you want to run it? FreeBSD is beautiful, elegant. There's no systemd. <laughs> There's no GNU GPL madness. The, the BSD license is very, very open. Uh, it's fully featured. It's a full featured Unix-like kernel. Um, it's very stable, very well developed. Uh, pretty much any package that you'd want to run on Linux has also been ported. So you can install your, your GNU tools. You can install almost anything. Uh, what else? Um, there's no system D. I don't know if that matters to anyone. <laughs> there's no system D. Uh, why would you not want to run FreeBSD? There are not many reasons. There are probably a few edge cases that work better in Linux, but uh, I haven't been up to date. But one nice thing about FreeBSD, you can emulate Linux. Uh, as long as you know your binary is, is architecture compatible, you can run Linux. And I remember uh, Linux applications. So I remember, and it's probably been 10 years, but at some point people were benchmarking, and I can't even remember the database, but they were benchmarking uh, performance against the Linux kernel and FreeBSD. FreeBSD in emulation mode had better <laughs> performance. So it, it waxes and wanes, but it's a highly performant, fully featured operating system. OK, so but how does it fit in cloud native space? Well, so that's kind of interesting, too. Uh, FreeBSD is, so you cannot run Linux containers directly because for a few reasons. Uh, for one thing, it doesn't, FreeBSD doesn't have C groups, it doesn't have network namespaces. What it does have are jails, and it's had jails for built into the kernel almost, I think, since 2004 ish. Uh, jails are implemented, they're, in many ways, they're, they're very analogous to Linux containers. They are, but they, instead of, instead of C groups and network namespaces, they use shrouded you know, change root jails, uh, change root spaces. So they're implemented very differently, but they're also extremely similar. You can run, you, you can make very small jail images with just what you need to run, and it is emulated within the kernel. Um, so, however, <laughs> uh, there is definitely, there is, there are a lot of people who are trying to bring FreeBSD into the cloud native, further into the cloud native na uh, landscape. Uh, there are efforts to make runtimes. There's already a pretty good, not quite fully featured runtime, so you can run jails via Containerd. Containerd now has FreeBSD support. It's very early. I don't think it has 
not sure if it has what the network state is, but you can run the jails. Um, the beautiful thing would be, and people are working on this, uh, a full-fledged FreeBSD node for Kubernetes. And I don't know when that will happen, but I know it will happen because a lot of people are really interested in it and people are making progress on it. Yeah. Go back. So another interesting thing <laughs> is uh, I am running FreeBSD oh, good on uh, FreeBSD on my laptop. Why does this matter? <laughs> FreeBSD is not a laptop friendly operating system. Um, it's probably where Linux was 10 or 15 years ago. So I am just happy it's working at all, but it's still a little kludgy. Okay, so, well, so we can't make a FreeBSD node yet, but what can we do? Well, we can still get Kubernetes to run on FreeBSD. How do we do that? So Beehive is a level two uh, virtualization manager built, uh, well, support is built into the, the FreeBSD kernel. So it's, it's pretty much, Beehive is analogous to uh, KBM, to Kimu, QE, I don't know how you pronounce that, QEMU. Um, so it's highly stable, it's fully featured, you know, you do need uh, CPU support for the virtualization, but. Uh, so what can we do? Well, we can run Linux VMs on Beehive. Uh, and then on those VMs we can make those Kubernetes nodes. And then if you have FreeBSD plus Kubernetes, you have a really, this was from Stable Diffusion, which turned out pretty well. You have, you have the FreeBSD daemon. If you don't know that, that's similar <laughs> to the logo, to the, the, the red happy FreeBSD daemon. And it's at the ship's wheel. So how do you, uh, this is another stable diffusion. It's a happy little FreeBSD-ish daemon on a cloud. So <laughs> how do you make a, a Kate's cluster on a FreeBSD host? Now I have a demo um, and when I got here, I did make, <laughs> I did make FreeBSD connect to the, the Wi-Fi network, but then I discovered that the Wi-Fi network was in the same network space. <laughs> As, as my virtual. So I did some quick renumbering for my demo. It may or may not work. If it does not work, I will. Uh, I have a couple of kludgy slides that, that may or may not help. So, and I'm gonna do this kind of oddly. I'm gonna be doing some cheesy cut and paste. But, okay, for one thing, just quick notes on how this is implemented. Uh, there are several wrappers for, for Beehive, kind of like there are several wrappers for, for KVM, for, for uh, Linux virtualized machines, virtual machines. Um, I'm using one called CBSD, and CBSD is pretty well featured. It's still, none of these are completely not as polished, I would say, as like the Kimu, I still don't know how to pronounce that, uh, <laughs> um, layer, but there, uh, CBSD is, is pretty well featured. Um, it supports booting from an ISO, it supports booting from a machine image that you can then, if you have cloud in it installed, you can just populate it that way. Uh, it's got, handles the networking, it handles VNC, it handles uh, devices like IO devices. Uh, it, it works pretty well. It's still, eh, it's still a couple things occasionally that don't work quite as expected. Uh, but it has, it also has, you can either operate it through a, a CLI, it's got a pretty good CLI, or you can use this menu. So I'm going to just show you the menu really quick. Um, if you've ever, do, 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 if you have ever actually touched FreeBSD, you will recognize <laughs> this menu interface. I think it's, it's curses. I don't know if they're using curses or end curses or some for it. Um, 
Uh, if you've ever installed, you will see this menu. If you compile and install, uh, there are two basic ways to install packages, pre-built packages on, on FreeBSD. You can either, use, well, pre-compiled, there's a package system, PKG, which is, which is actually an inspiration for Debian's apt. Um, or you can compile the, the applications from source in the user ports. It's called the FreeBSD port system. Uh, ports are nice. They, I've never, I don't think, had a problem with a failed port compilation. Uh, and you can configure, it will pop up a menu similar to this, so you can make any configurations you want. So, but anyways, so <laughs> if you do anything on FreeBSD from a command line, you will see at some point this, this type of menu. So this is nice. I don't have, I did not download the ISO image to do this. I wanted to show you a boot, but uh, there are a lot of pre-built packages um, or pre-built, pre-configured. So this is what's been pre-configured so far. I have, it's been a while, I did make um, Alpine. I got Alpine configured. No, not Alpine. Was that? I don't think it was supported when I did this. OK, anyways. So you can make, so as, as long as uh, yeah, you, can, you can boot, and then you can connect through. The VNC port is really nice. It, it works. Um, you can also, there are also some pre-baked images that are already configured. So they, they call them cloud, so you can do cloud init on them. So, but we're not going to use this. I just wanted to show you. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we are going to use the command line to build, to make an image. Uh, let's see. Um, doo -doo -doo. Sorry, I have this little cheat sheet so I can cut and paste. And again, I don't know if this will actually, the network at least will actually work. <laughs> uh, and I don't know if cutting and pasting from here will actually work. We will find out. Okay. So this is nice. I fed this, I fed this, this instant, this jconf file. They used the j prefix because it was originally for jails, uh, but this is for, um, uh, a Beehive VM. Uh, this just wrote the configuration. I now have to start it. Ah! Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Yay, so now it's going to boot. And it boots really quickly from an image as long as you have the image downloaded. So we can see uh, I have six, like the agent and the server prefixes were what I had originally made <laughs> to show you a, a running cluster. But um, I stopped those because, again, they were in the, the same network namespace as the Wi-Fi. So this one, rejects dash s dot dash zero, is in the one I, it's in a not, <laughs> not the Wi-Fi namespace. So it's on. We can do a couple things. Um, I can't log in because by default, it's going to lock out the user password. But I just wanted to show you that we can see it booting. Wait, is it going to finish? OK, yeah, it finished booting. Um, I use Tiger VNC. It's very nice. I've tried them all for, for Linux and FreeBSD. That's the only one I, I really like. Um, so we can also get oh, B login. Um, Uh, it populates, uh, CBSD does this nice thing. It, it creates an SSH key, and then it, it uh, will through cloud and it put put it into your image so you can just use their CBSD login B login wrapper. So here we just started up. It was really quick. It was much quicker than I could type and log in. Um, I have a decent powered laptop that helps. Uh, yeah, so this is our brand new Ubuntu VM running on my laptop. 
on FreeBSD. Uh, so now I'm going to I'm going to show you K3S. I'm going to install uh, a control plane node with K3S because it's much simpler. And again, I don't know if this will actually <laughs> work. I'm using the IPFD firewall, which is also native to FreeBSD, to configure my, my routing. Oh, I forgot to show you my nice little bridge. So I have this nice little bridge, which is bridging now my 192.168 uh, non collision, non colliding <laughs> network space. Um, so, 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 and did I? Nope, that's not what I want. Uh, I'm doing this neat little trick here, which I probably should have taken out because it's a little too complicated. Um, I'm just going to make, I made 192.168.0, uh, made it a virtual address. So in case I wanted multiple control plane nodes, I could just have a simple round robin. Uh, but I'm only going to do one here because it's much quicker. Okay. Eh. We'll leave this. I got the subnets in the right place. Oh, I just realized this might be a little slow because it has to download stuff. Or it doesn't like my DNS. Yes. So on the bridge that you showed earlier, were those three additional networks that was attached to as well? On the bridge, yeah. Uh, it's just bridging my local network on the on the host to whatever I populate in the <laughs> in the VLAN. Uh, no, okay, didn't like that. So I'm not going to troubleshoot this too much, but because I'm getting a little low on time, also. Um, but if I had more time to set this up, it, it actually worked at home <laughs> when I had <laughs> when I didn't have any, you know, when I used my nice little uh, ten dot slash eight uh, network, but um, yeah, it will magically <laughs> work. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the internal, it's using the routing, uh, it, it works fine, the network, so the, the nodes, the control plane nodes talk to each other fine. If I create agents, you know, non-control plane nodes, those talk fine. Uh, I configured it here, in theory, this is the uh, pod network. This is the service network. Uh, these are all, oh, I can show you the firewall rules that I would have used. Um, I'm using, so I took a very scientific poll on Twitter. <laughs> there are three, there are three uh, generally supported uh, firewall, firewall implementations in FreeBSD. There's IPFW, which is what I'm using here. There's PF, and then there's PF sets. Uh, PF is, from my scientific Twitter poll, is the most popular. It's a very, very good firewall. I think it's out of OpenBSD. Uh, I'm using IPFW here because for mostly it's a little easier to do uh, the IP forwarding, or if I had more time, if I'd done more time playing with PF, I might have gotten to work. And it's also easy to do round robin load balancing for for my VIPs in case I had three control plane nodes uh, and I again wanted to rotate make sure I had multiple control plane nodes for uh, my Kubernetes API endpoint. So of course I have a single point of failure if I have all my control plane nodes running on one one hypervisor but you can also you know you could configure across a virtual network and bridge it uh, with multiple hosts. Okay, so so here's what I would do. This is the IPF firewall. So anything in the again my my slash twenty yeah one ninety two one sixty eight dot twenty slash twenty four network is for my Kubernetes services, and I'm just forwarding these directly to the agents. Uh, this is this would be <laughs> my agent, uh, one of my agent endpoints. I didn't make a virtual IP for that, but 
Uh, so anything, the it, IP4 just redirects any, any request, any network connection coming in for a service to, to one of the agent nodes. So again, this is not high availability when it does if you have multiple endpoints when it does the round robin, it's not doing a health check. But if you just want something really lightweight for testing and you don't want to run your own load balancer or like H8 proxy and configure that, it's a really easy way to set it up. Uh, okay, in theory, again, if I had a working cluster, I could just run, you know, create a deployment, uh, check my pods, I could then do a port forward and, and, uh, Oh, hit the, hit the pod uh, and look for it. Uh, and I could, could also expose a node port load balancer. And so this would give me you know, a cluster or a service IP in the 192.168.30 space. And in theory, I could connect to that. And my pods could also speak to each other. Uh, yeah, so. This is, again, this is not ideal. It's not quite Kubernetes first class citizen in the cloud native namespace, but it, it's a good entry point. Uh, it's using, this is nice because I have, other than configuring some, a local uh, authoritative uh, name service DNS, I'm not really configuring a lot other than the networking, you know, the bridge and and the forwarding, which is minimal. So you can obviously get fancier. Like I said, you could use HA proxy for load balancing with health checks. You could do a lot of, you know, all this runs on FreeBSD. You could use that. But it's a really, it's a pretty lightweight way just to, if you want to touch FreeBSD, which is fun, <laughs> you can you can run your, your Kubernetes network and, and Check it that way. Um, yeah. So let's see what else I had. Karen, do you want to take questions? Yes. Let me make sure. OK. So in case I couldn't get the, well, and this only partly hurts, <laughs> in case I couldn't get my demo, I have some really simple slides. Uh, this is what K3S install would look like. I'm using Alex Ellis's K3S up, which is much easier to configure. It's a very nice command line. Uh, it would, in theory, install my server. And if I then had eventually a working cluster, I could run all those kubectl commands, kube control, whatever you want to call it, and everything would magically work. OK. <laughs> So, awesome. I, I was going to say, let's give her a hand because live demos are hard. <laughs> okay, a um, couple things you can see, find me on Twitter. Uh, I did this is this talk was based on uh, experiments I did about two years ago, and I blogged about it. Um, and this is my blog. I will also tweet it. That might be easier to find. Um, I did update it a little for this talk, use newer versions of everything. I will post an updated blog post with the information uh, probably in the next couple of days, and I'll tweet about it too. Uh, but yeah, and I have a nice step-by-step -step tutorial, which in theory would work, because it's what I did when I got a working cluster. But obviously, you can tweet me any questions, anything you, you know, comments, whatever. Okay. Yeah, do you have questions? Who has questions? I'm good. I'm glad. Go ahead. You're first, and we'll go to you to a second. Uh, comment and questions. The well. first one is this feels a lot like uh, multicast on the Mac OS and Windows side, yep. which is really cool because we have something like that for free to use. The question, though, is um, you mentioned that Container D is starting to support kind of, it sounds like an abstraction around the BSD concept. Mm -hmm. I don't know about, I'm sure there are probably people working on the Mac side, but it's, you know, Darwin is not a complete implementation. It's not the FreeBSD kernel. It just takes large chunks of it. Let me just flip that. Back. Okay. Uh, what about just on, on BSD itself? On FreeBSD, do you think Synergy will ever get to the place where we just run Kubernetes on top without a virtualization layer? Yes. 
Yes, I do. And, and people are really interested in, to, in approaching that in two ways. One is using jails instead yeah. of Linux containers. But, and I didn't download the, the container image. Uh, we have a slow network here, and I didn't do it last night. But you can run, and I have a blog post about this on my blog. You can actually run a Linux container on in emulation mode uh, directly on FreeBSD, on container D. It doesn't support networking yet. It's not fancy, but it works. So people are working on that. They're really, a lot of people are excited about that. Thanks. Thanks. Awesome, so you are second? Yeah, I have two questions. The first one was uh, whether or not there's currently ARM support. Because there's a lot of lack of I know, I haven't seen an update recently, but I do know that as of a couple months ago, people were still working on ARM support for Beehive. I don't know what the status is of that, but it's, it's definitely a work in progress. People are actively working on that. It's a de facto standard. Um, again, there are multiple wrappers. Uh, it's fully featured. Um, I follow the on Twitter mutuals with the maintainer of, of Beehive Project, and he was, he was talking about the other day. He was tweeting. He he tested. He runs tests, and he was like trying to mount twelve different disk devices. <laughs> so it's yeah, it, it's it's um, it's built in. You just load a kernel module. It ships with the standard FreeBSD kernel. It's yeah. This is such a neat intersection of tech nerdery. Um, more questions? Come on, somebody's got one, because I've got one. OK, maybe it's just me and naive questions. But what do you need from the Kubernetes community to also help enable this to be able to run on BSD? Is there anything within Kubernetes that can help? Um, I don't think people have started uh, started working on the nodelet yet. I think they're still waiting on, you know, container, container D. D. Okay. But and and the runtime because okay. container D is not mostly not the blocker. It's things like the CNI plugin for okay. for RunJ. And and do you know if there's work started on those or do you, okay good. So there's pe people can find people people could reach out to you and say point me to where I can help and yep. you can be like go work there. Yep. Okay. It's, cool. Yep. So now we've got a way to engage with this. This is awesome, Karen. Thank you. I'm so excited you. that you were able to join us. Karen Bruner, folks. Thank you. Thank you.